Hi everyone, it's Pastor Mike here and I'm looking forward to this time that we have together this week. Um, I want to give you a quick update on a few things. First of all, it seems like we're going to be doing an, an online service at least for a couple of more weeks. So hopefully this has been beneficial for you and if you have any suggestions or anything, uh, go ahead and let us know. Um, shoot us an email, give us a call. We can still receive all of that and we're still um, still working hard for you guys. And uh, here's a couple of quick announcements that I did want to bring to your attention. Um, first of all, we have some questions about giving. Um, people want to still give to the church and, and uh, there's a few different ways that you can do that. One way that you can do that is by just sending a physical check to the church. We'll get that, we'll receive that, and be able to deposit it in our account. Um, another way to do it is to go online and use the online um, the, the link on our webpage to, uh, to give online. Um, and another way that we're implementing this week is a text to give option. Um, this is something that is connected with our church app, which will be rolling out within the next month or so. Uh, but right now we do have access to the text to give option. So the instructions for that is you can just text the word give to this number to 877-825-7134. Text the word give to that. You will receive a text back with a link that takes you to an account page. So you can set up your own account there um, and then you'll, you'll never have to do that again. You'll just set up that account and you'll be able to text to give anytime you want. You could do it every day if you wanted to. That would be perfectly fine. But the, this is going to make it a little bit simpler and smoother. If you're comfortable doing that, take advantage of that. Um, and we'll have the uh, instructions posted up on our, our church blog, uh, which is where we do most of our announcements. So they will, announcements and updates eventually do find themselves um, getting to Facebook and getting to other social media. But right now the best way to find any most current announcements and updates is to check our webpage at discoverthegrove.com um, we also need we're looking for a hundred subscribers to the youtube channel if you're watching now you're watching it on youtube so if you haven't subscribed to our page yet please make time to do that uh, if we can get a hundred subscribers then youtube makes it a little bit easier for us to post information and uh, we, right now we can send out notifications and, and you'll get updates if you're a subscriber. Um, it'll be a lot easier for you to find if you subscribe. So there's a lot of advantages to that. So if you're watching this um, and you're going to watch the stuff that we post regularly, please consider subscribing to the YouTube page. Um, and uh, just the last announcement I have here is that we're going to do another breakout session, a Zoom session after the service today. So you can find the link for that either on our blog or on Facebook, or you can find it in the description of the video on the YouTube site. Just uh, click on that link and that'll take you to our Zoom session and you'll be able to interact and engage. And we're, we're limiting those to about 20 minutes, so it's not going to be a long period of time. We just want to have an opportunity to connect with people and to re-engage with people as, uh, as we're all kind of separate right now. So those are the only announcements I have here today. Um, before we get moving, I'd like to take a moment and let's pray for each other at this time. Will you please join me? Father, I thank you so much for this church family. I thank you for even uh, those who might be joining us today that are uh, not currently part of the church family at the Grove. And I'd ask that you would use this time that we have together to focus our minds and our hearts on you. There's so much happening and it feels like life is changing and shifting so quickly at these times, but we know, Lord, that you have never changed, that you don't shift or move, that you are eternal, and all that is happening now, you've already known about it. And I pray that you would um, comfort us now and give us peace in this time, help us to continue to see the hope that we have in you beyond everything that is going on here today. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come, you're ruined and sanctified. 
come You who have been denied Come you wounded and broken The ones for whom the light has spoken Bend your knees Sacred head for 
a sinner such as I. Thy body slain, sweet Jesus, and bathed in its so blood. While the firm mark of wrath divine, his soul in anguish stood. At the cross.
right, good morning everyone. My name is Scott and I'm one of the pastors here at The Grove and it's good to be with you today. Uh, welcome to my living room this morning. Um, we have a saying here at the church and it really shapes a lot of well, pretty much everything that we do and why we do it. And that's that we are committed to helping each other pursue Jesus in all aspects of life. The good news is that that is still true even in the middle of social distancing. My hope for, for all of us is that we would come through this time not just to go back to life the way it was before, but that we would focus on what really is important. Because whether you're a, a child, a student, a woman or a man, young or old, all of us are walking through unprecedented times. Uh, we're, we're, we're in the time when we're beginning to get even more clarity on what really matters. And I hope that what's going on for you, no matter what it is, uh, that in the midst of it all, you're finding comfort and peace through your faith in Jesus. Uh, I hope that you know that this virus hasn't surprised God. Yes, it is tragic for countless people all around the world, and it has altered the lives of billions of people. Let me say this with as much clarity as I, as I can. If you're a follower of Jesus, there has probably never been a time in your life where the message of the hope of Jesus is more likely to find a listening ear than right now. So as much as we want to care for ourselves and our families and our friends, which every single one of those is a good thing, we don't want to overlook or miss the mission that Jesus gave to his followers to share the hope that we have in Jesus with those around us. And God is giving each of us incredibly unique opportunities to live with hope and mercy among the people that are a part of our lives. So if you're joining us for the first time, uh, for the last few months, our church, we've been studying through the letter of 1 Thessalonians. It's one of the earliest letters that Paul wrote in the New Testament, and it was written to a church that was started and then thrust into the face of persecution. Uh, the kind of persecution that could have caused people to isolate from each other, to go into self-protect mode, but this church hadn't done that. In fact, they actually reached out to each other more and they had a reputation among all people that God had not only changed them, but the way that they lived just echoed of that change. They were different from who they used to be. They were different from their neighbors and yet they were still compassionate to all people. Paul recognized that and he, he complimented on them on the good things that they were doing and he encouraged them to keep on growing in their faith. Now, if you're a part of the Grove, you've, you've heard your pastor say throughout this series that you are a blessing to us. You've heard us say that you're living well, you're living the way that God has called you to live. You, you've heard us say, don't give up though. Keep on loving, keep on living in the way that God has called you to. And that, that doesn't change in the middle of a pandemic when we're physically separating ourselves from each other and from our neighbors, that doesn't change. Now today we're getting closer to the finishing point in this letter. And so as Paul begins wrapping things up, he's been encouraging the church to not lose heart, but to live in certain ways towards each other in the church and outside of it. And today we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. If you're online and you don't have a Bible, you could check out the YouVersion Bible app. It's free, and you can pick up a, a copy of the Bible there, uh, and you can get one in your hands right away. But um, let's read these words from 1 Thessalonians 5 that are so important to each of us, whether we're young or old, uh, married or single, a follower of Jesus, or somebody that's just wondering what this is all about. This is what Paul says to the Thessalonians here. He says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Now you might be thinking, well, Scott, that sounds impossible. How do I do that? Because Paul is saying things like always and never stop and in all circumstances. And let's be honest, that sounds kind of impossible. Or is it? See, we have to remember that Paul was writing this letter to an entire church, a church that was made up of men, women, and children that were living in community and that were facing persecution. So if I was going to be reminded by someone of these things right now, when I know people that are wondering if they're going to have a job in a few weeks, or 
if someone that they love is going to get sick? Or what if they, what if they actually died? I want to be reminded of these types of things that Paul talks about by somebody that actually knows what it is to suffer. And Paul wrote this letter while he was on the run from people that were trying to kill him. And he wrote it to a church that was very likely suffering physically, financially, and they had been wrestling spiritually with what they were experiencing. How does it all make sense? See, these are not just suggestions that Paul gives the church. They're not just good ideas for a peaceful life. Paul gives them commands in the midst of their suffering. And here they are. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. and Be thankful in all circumstances. Now there's a couple of thoughts I'd like for us to consider this morning. First of all, always be joyful. The powerful thing here is that it doesn't say uh, always be happy. Paul wasn't some first century Bobby McFarlane running around telling you, don't worry, be happy all the time. In fact, actually what you'll see as you spend time in the Bible is that it gives us a worldview that doesn't deny reality. The Bible doesn't deny that there are things worth crying about or being sorrowful over. If you even look at the Jesus as a man, he was well acquainted with sorrow. The Bible talks about the fact that he wept, that he shed tears. Paul, who wrote this letter, told another church to rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. And to another church in Corinth, Paul said this, He described himself as a person that had a heart that aches, but he was always with joy. And that implies that there is something much deeper than just this idea of like, oh, our best life or being just okay. That's a life that's rooted in something that is so much deeper than our circumstances. That's a life that's rooted deeply in the ways of Jesus. So how do we lead our hearts into joy when our circumstances are scary? I have three ideas for you today, and it begins by choosing to focus our hearts on Jesus daily. That means we focus on who Jesus is and his promises in the Bible rather than the latest news feed. Listen, the reality is that you and I are doing our very best to make decisions based off of what information we have. The problem is that the information is changing so rapidly that we need to have a foundation in something that is stable. We need to be rooted in the hopeful, joyful promises of God, something to set our eyes and our hearts on in the midst of our sorrow. And so we have to choose to refocus our hearts on Jesus on a daily basis. So what's the first thing that you look at when you wake up in the morning? Is it the latest numbers of people that got sick? Is it checking to see if our state's stay in home order has been expanded past the 6th? Or is it on the words and the promises of Jesus? See, this is a choice that you and I both have the power to make each morning. What will we focus on first? And next, as we focus on who Jesus is, I think we need to strive to be led by the Spirit of God rather than our own efforts. This means that we not only focus on Jesus and what he said, but we also ask God to lead us each day in the decisions that we're making. See, the Bible teaches us that joy will grow in our lives the more that we actually follow the Spirit of God. And I'll touch a little bit more on that in a moment. But another way that we can help refocus our hearts towards joy is through the songs we sing. Now, there's a reason why we aren't just showing a sermon on our Sunday gatherings, even though they're online. There's a reason why Pastor Mike is putting a huge chunk of his week into putting together songs to help us still engage in worship, even in this setting. And that's because songs speak to our hearts. If you're overwhelmed or anxious, what are you singing about? Or are you singing at all? The reality is, is that songs speak to our hearts. And one way or another, they're gonna find you. They're gonna get you, get you, get you. I'm gonna just trust that that landed for a few of you. But seriously, Is your music helping you to refocus on Jesus on a daily basis? Is it helping you to remember to follow the Spirit of God? Because it can definitely help in times like this. The next command of Paul to the church is this. Never stop praying. Now Paul isn't condemning the church to a life of mealtime and bedtime prayers. 
He's calling the church to never forget that God is listening, to have a rhythm of talking to God that is as natural as breathing. That's more that there is this dynamic between you and the Spirit of God that allows you to speak to God at any moment. Now let me say this is a lifelong process of growing in our habits of prayer. But understand, it is a process of developing habits of prayer. So for instance, we tend to ramp up everything in our lives. We ramp up our exercise in increments or we suffer the costs. We ramp up our relationships in increments. We give more responsibilities to people at work as they master things. So if prayer is kind of foreign for you outside of a meal time or church, then maybe you can try something that's simple. It's something that I try and do with my kids throughout the day. We call it popcorn prayers. And I'll randomly ask them something. I'll say like, hey, guys, what's something that you're happy about? And let's say that my daughter says, oh, pink and purple. And okay, she's, she's a six-year-old little girl. Of course, pink and purple are like the greatest things on the planet, right? So I usually, when she'll say that, I'll say, wow, that's great. Let's stop and thank God for pink and purple and all the other colors and that we have eyes to see them. And so we'll say, God, thank you for pink and purple and all the colors and that we get to see them. And then I stop and we rest for a moment and then we go back to what we were doing. Or maybe I'll ask something like this. I'll say, hey guys, what's something that you're worried about right now? My son um, has said, well, I'm, I'm concerned about mom going to work and getting sick. And I say, well, I'll tell you what, buddy, let's stop and let's ask God to protect mom. And let's ask that our hearts would be willing to trust God no matter what happens. And so we'll say, God, thank you that we can talk to you. Please keep mom safe at work today and help us to trust you no matter what happens in our lives. And then we rest in that. And then we go back to what we were doing. See, I say all of that because a lot of the times we tend to have this unattainable picture of prayer, and so we just never do it. And I, I think significant amounts of time in silence, listening to God, speaking to God, praying, reflecting, I think those are important. But we have to start somewhere. Prayer shouldn't be an event in our minds, but an interaction between us and the Spirit of God to express our gratitude, our worship, our fears, our joys, our hearts. And we can train ourselves into this just like a lot of other areas in our lives where we continue to add to it in order to help us go further and to go deeper. The reality is that I believe that prayer grows out of a heart that's focused on God. It grows out of a heart that believes God loves us and desires us to experience everything he longs for us to have. And so friends, never stop praying. Finally, and probably one of the most um, poignant things that Paul says to the church, a church that was suffering persecution for their faith. He says this, be thankful in all circumstances. This ultimately comes back, I believe, to whether we trust God or not. Because you and I will become embittered to God if we don't trust him when life gets hard. See, Jesus told his disciples when he was going to be taken from them that they would abandon him in John 15 and 16. And he says that so that they wouldn't lose their faith. In verse 33 of chapter 16, he says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I love that Jesus never tricked his followers with this bait and switch. He told them trial and sorrows were coming. And he told them they would face all sorts of uncomfortable things that were on the horizon. And why? So that they could have peace in him in the midst of their storms. Because he had overcome the world. And this is huge. Jesus was saying to his followers that they could have peace in every circumstance because Jesus is greater than our circumstances. And the implication is that we need to trust him for that peace. 
Being thankful in every circumstance is only possible when we trust God's plan. We don't need to feel thankful before we actually give thanks to God for what's in our lives. But this is why I think it's important that we are striving daily to go deep in our, deeper in our understanding of the promises of God, reading the Bible, learning what God has done, because this affects our ability to trust him. One way that you can check your heart in times like this is just listen to your conversations. If you're hearing complaining or grumbling or frustration pouring out, then you should probably pause and ask yourself if that's coming from a place where you don't trust God's plan for your life or if you don't even trust him as a whole. You may look at your social media account and some of your posts and ask the same question. I, I get it. Nobody wants to be dumb. We don't like to be hurt. We don't like to be taken advantage of. But understand this. If we are a people that complain a lot, we aren't a trusting people. This might be a place where you bring those popcorn prayers back into your life when circumstances are difficult. First of all, when you begin to see it, you've got to stop yourself. You've got to stop and say, God, I am choosing to trust that you are good and, and that you know what you're doing, and I don't. I trust that you're working your things together for your ultimate glory, so help me to trust you even, even in my doubts right now. That's kind of a long popcorn prayer, but you get the idea. It's just stopping and saying, God, okay, God, I trust you. I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you. Help me because there's doubts, there's frustration. And then pause and rest in that decision to trust him. The reality, I think, is that we have to coach our hearts into these things as a way of life. If we focus on our circumstances rather than Jesus, who is greater than our circumstances, then we're undermining our ability to live lives of thankfulness and gratitude. So we've got to learn that what we feel can be very real, it can be very powerful, but we still, we still have to decide how we're going to live, no matter what circumstances we face. See, Paul closes these verses by saying this, For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. These aren't nice things to try. They're God's will for his people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. I think there's a key to these things here that comes from everything that Paul has said earlier in this letter that you may miss if you're just focused on these three verses. You may feel like this is impossible. And you know what? You'd be right if you're not a follower of Jesus. On our own, these commands that Paul gives the church, they're burdens. It's like there's this shelf that's unreachable, but up there is a place of safety and peace, and you can't get to it, so you just get more and more frustrated, and you just want to give up. It just becomes a burden. But the beauty of the Christian faith is this. That we believe that the Bible teaches us that Jesus lived the life we couldn't. That he died the death that we should have died. That, that he paid for sin so that we could become children of God. And when that happens, the Bible promises us that the Spirit of God comes to live within us. To comfort us to guide us, to change us from the inside out, to grow in us the character of Jesus. And that one day, he has promised us that all the wrongs that we are experiencing will be set right. And that's the hope that we have as followers of Jesus. That God is bigger than our circumstances, and he has been faithful throughout time, and one day, all wrongs will be set right. So in him, we can have lasting joy. We can have a relationship with God that is permeated by our interaction with each other. And we can live in a way that isn't crushed by our circumstances, but instead it pours out gratitude to God for what we do have. Because we're children of God. Because we're in Christ Jesus. That's the hope that we have. Listen, if you feel overwhelmed in this time, or if you have questions about what that could look like for you and you just want to pray with somebody, you want to pray with one of the pastors here at the church, we'd love to do that. It, it may look a little different right now, but we'll figure it out. 
If you're on Facebook, send us a message on Messenger or call the church office, shoot us an email, join us for one of our Zoom breakouts. The, the reality is, is that we're, we're here and we're doing our best because we love you guys and we want you to experience these types of things in your life, no matter what your circumstances are, so that we could have peace in our lives, so that we could have joy and gratitude and know that God is listening to us. Listen, if we want to go deeper in our faith, it means we've got to trust Jesus in new ways. And friends, let me tell you what, every single one of us right now is having new opportunities to trust Jesus in new ways. We love you. We're praying for you. Why don't we do that now as we conclude our time? Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you give us the hope that we can be people that are joyful, people that are thankful, people that know you are listening to us. Lord, I pray for the men and the women and the children that are watching right now, Lord, that you would draw them to yourself, that you would pull down any barriers that might be coming between them and you, that they would find hope and joy and gratitude and mercy through Jesus. Father, I thank you. I pray for your protection over our church family and that you would bring us back together in a quick way, but in a safe way. Give us eyes that see what you want us to see, ears that hear what you want us to hear, and help us to trust your spirit today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, thanks so much. We have another song for you today, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Where can I go to run from you? Your mercy and love pursue me. Down this road.